Thanks, Rocco. Well, Brian and I were just talking about how this one segment could probably fill up an entire conference in and do itself. And so um, w I'm going to be very judicious with my time so that we can get to everybody else. So bear with me. I'm going to kind of fly through this stuff. But, you know, what's amazing about what we're talking about here as a conference, five years ago, we weren't talking about cloud storage. We weren't talking about even mobile gaming. We weren't talking, and, and certainly words like augmented reality, and virtual reality were not around the kitchen table. And what's terrific about that is that now you have this proliferation, uh, both on the VR and the AR side. And I think we're up to, I don't know, uh, probably over almost 30 uh, AR manufacturers, which is phenomenal because uh, it, it's really pointing to the fact that there's, there's a, uh, an explosion going on. And my number there at the bottom is off, and I'm it's more or less to point out that that was only about less than a year old, and now they're already, I think the projection is about 150 billion instead uh, for what this is gonna take off. But, so setting AR aside, now you start thinking about uh, interactive gaming. And what, as you look at, for example, eSports, right now eSports has a viewership that is commensurate with the NHL. In two years, it's gonna surpass the NFL. And what's amazing about that is 40% of the people that watch those games don't even play the game that they're watching. But you can see what's happening in each of, from the mobile side, from uh, what I'll call uh, the live action, all of these types of games continue to explode in terms of revenue. And what you can see further elaborating here and taking geolocation games uh, that are augmented reality to the physical and digital games that are, are uh, crossing over, they continue to explode. And so, what what is LightShot? Well, what we attempted to do was take the best of console gaming, marry it with uh, geolocation gaming, that's augmented reality, and cross it with kind of your old-fashioned interactive gaming. Well, what what does that look like, and what does that sound like? Well, it's a really long way to explain that. In, in simple terms, what I say we've created is we meets Minecraft meets Twitch. Um, <laughs> and, and that's about the shortest way I can get to it. But now, all of those technologies I was just talking about, think about connecting uh, through the Internet of Things and creating all of your interactions as part of a gaming platform. And now, layer in augmented reality. So now, think... Jarvis with Iron Man, and you are in the game, and you are seeing that heads-up display of what your uh, health stats are and your inventory. But not only that, you're now able to interact with AI characters. So how do we do that? Well, we've created a, uh, this is where the Wii part comes in, this uh, hardware system, it's open source uh, for maker community to develop their own products. And, and it has an array of sensors in it, Bluetooth, IR, accelerometer, so on. And the light puck not only serves as a receiver, but it also uh, can be put in the field of play to act as a portal or what have you. And it's programmed uh, depending on what type of game you want to develop. And third-party developers can develop for the platform. Um, and we're also developing for the platform as well. We already have two games underway. The first game is called Assassin, which is based on kind of the college classic game that's been around for about 30 years. Besiege is a fantasy RPG where you're a warrior wizard uh, ranger, and you, it's a domination style game. And I don't know if you're familiar with Humans vs. Zombie, but it's a, a game that's played on about 650 college campuses. Uh, and they're, they've gotten so big that uh, there's an entire Nerf line dedicated to them, and they've uh, <laughs> tripled in revenue. But they have uh, designed our first third party game called Invasion, which is a tower defense style game. So now start thinking about your favorite kind of IP. So whether it's Star Wars or uh, any of those types of games, now you can be in the game. And that interactive play happens by connecting the lighter through your phone uh, via Bluetooth. And all of that, that information goes through the cloud and shared with other players instantaneously. So you need a lightsaber, you need a dagger, whatever that game is, um, you're able to use 
our peripherals, or you can 3D print for using our designs, or you can design your own and upload them to our site and we'll help you monetize. So what we've really tried to create here is a very robust community. It's open source in terms of um, the gaming side to develop your own games, but also uh, on the peripheral side as well. And ideally, this is where we're heading, where now you're in the game, arena play, and you're able to see everything that's happening. And so what I want to do is show you a clip uh, from one of our games using uh, AR glasses. Which, bear with me as we'll run the Jeopardy. So on the bottom there, you're seeing the compass that's showing you the direction of your uh, opponent. That's where the red diamond is, and it's giving you distance to target using your GPS coordinates. The green is your shield, which you can activate. Uh, in addition, there's a timer in the upper right-hand corner. And what's happening here is he's now discovering that she's closing the distance by looking at that information, and he's going to take off as a result. But so all of that information was going through the internet, through the cloud, and it's being relayed in real time. So if you can think of a game, it can be built on the platform. Thank you. We have time for a couple of quick questions from Mark. Just very quickly, I'm sorry if you talked about this already. Um, did you discuss haptic feedback? Yes, so um, it, we have um, uh, vibration in both uh, the light puck and in the, the lighter, and there's also audio feedback. So um, depending on what you want to program your game for, all that information can come through, um, depending on, uh, again, it's up to how you want to design the game, but yes, that's, that's included as well. Other questions? Can I just one? Sure. Great question. So the platform is agnostic in a lot of ways. Uh, you can use Unity, you can use Unreal, whatever you want, and it'll port across uh, the, the platform. What's great about it is this type of game mechanic style is more menu driven. It's not obviously rendered driven. The other side too is that we're glass agnostic. So we can, we can run on uh, a lot of the ones that are out there and hope, hope to on all of them. That's about all the time we have questions for. Us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, we've got to move it on. We've got a lot of speakers in the session. So, <laughs> Mark Ladd, everybody.